Okay. I've had a slight change of heart. I think, um... So, well, I changed my mind a few times. <laughs> so this would be really... Is, these bullfinch torches are really good. Uh, they just really, you know... Very, very powerful. Um, so I brought that in, obviously, to preheat this. And then I suddenly realised I'm sitting here looking at some brazing rods I bought the other day, uh, which are almost exactly the right size for the little things. So I could just heat that up to brazing temperature. Done. Easy peasy. But that doesn't tell me anything. Uh, it just tells me that I can't weld. Um, so then I thought, well, I'll just heat it up, get it red hot. Well, not red hot, but get it uh, super hot. Get my little insulating blanket on the ready and uh, weld it again with the nickel rods uh, and then and then I will know the difference between welding this cold and welding it preheated so I think that's what I'm gonna do here we go I'm not going to put the camera into uh, a welding mask That didn't really work. Last time, so I'm just going to do it. Be damned. That's it. That's a good temperature right there.
cracking. Yeah, it's splitting all over the place. Yeah, splitting. So, this welding isn't working. But, got a couple of... Oh, hello! <laughs> Did you hear that? I'll just leave that I mean that's not super insulating so it will cool down uh, relatively quickly probably within 20 30 minutes um, but uh, you know I think it's it's cracked already um, so this is just to kind of reduce it I need to, uh, well, actually I don't know I don't know what that's gonna do it'll put a heat cycle through it and we'll see what it looks like and then I'm gonna come back out warm the whole thing, well, uh, grind down the weld, see if we've got any good weld on it, and then um, probably uh, grind down the weld, see if it's any good, and then braise it. One cup of tea later, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's not red hot. Wouldn't like to hold on to it too long. Well, that's, um, Sounds better. There's a crack <laughs> right through that weld. Um, this one's okay. It's cracked around the you know. It's cracked around the weld actually. So it's cracking. It's cracked right through that weld. It's cracked around this weld and it's cracked right through that weld. So and you know the penetration was good. <laughs> Look at that. But. I think it would work if uh, if I could keep it hot, but it's such a large surface area um, to keep that at welding heat. I suppose you'd have to you'd have to try um, would be more trouble than it's worth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take it outside. Might as well grind that back now, uh, and then grind out any cracks again. Uh, and then I am going to raise it. Yeah. This is okay through the casting, but it uh, doesn't do so well on the weld. Let's have a look. interesting so I've come across a hard filament I don't think I've welded there it's definitely a glass hard uh, immovable object inside my casting no immovable but cracked through it is sounding better no flexing on it so maybe just strengthen it up and Hope for the best. They don't make these things like they used to.
Oh, that'll be. Well, so this is going to be another experiment because <coughs> I haven't used this torch before to braise. I have managed to melt some uh, large bits of brass with it, though, so it should uh, should be okay. It'll be a darn sight easier than breaking out the oxy kit. Maybe using the wrong rods. I have no idea what these were. I think I used those for TIG brazing. Let's see what it comes out like. No cheating. I haven't looked yet. Quite warm. Oh, hang on a minute. It's tinkling. Just then. It 
sound side. And there is, so there's been a bit of bit of penetration. Um, it's my first ever nickel weld. Still fabulous. Only because the whole rest of it is uh, bent and buckled and snapped and broken, but it's not flexing noticeably. Some of this braze doesn't look like it's really stuck. Um, it certainly has in places, it's taken in places. It's evidence of more cracks. There's a definite crack there. Yeah, definite crack there that hasn't been ground out, so it wasn't there previously. And if I look along it, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like the whole thing has buckled. This certainly looks buckled in here, so that material's gone somewhere. Hasn't gone into those bloody cracks, that's for sure. All right, well, let's uh, get rid of all this flux um, and uh, give it a really good clean. Okay, so I'm all set to uh, start blasting it, but you need full, you know, only it's uh, kiln dried sand. Don't want it in your lungs or your eyes. Rock and roll. It's running. Okay. Here we go. All right, so that's where we're at. Um, It sounds solid. But you can see there's cracks in it. I mean, obviously, these ones have been for so some of them are new. That's a new one there. That's a new one there. But, you know, it's... Uh, if I was going to braise it again, probably fill that bit. I could try TIG brazing. Tried everything else. Is that a bit of penetration there? There's a drip. That is. That's obviously worked. You know, you'd, I'd expect to see a bit more brass on this rear side if I'd uh, been using Oxia Satellin. I mean, so that's a solid repair. I can tidy this up. Um, but it's more about uh, physical, physical strength and durability. Uh, is it? Maybe it's just about getting it done. Let's have a look. This came with it. I'm guessing that was bolted down. I mean, you would think it should be bolted that way, but I don't see how it could be. Oh yeah, no, it's, well that's. I'm trying to see if that's a chamfered hole or a Well, these definitely line up with those, so I would say they should go like that. That's how it looks like it should. Yeah, and that provides you with a, a seal. Yeah, I think that's the way it should go. Um, that's a shame it's going to hide my repair. Ah. Tempting to spray that whole bloody thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> just freeze it on there. <laughs> Flood it, fill it up with. No, no. But it's actually it's going to look good when it's done. That's not true. Uh, Alrighty, well, I think that's about as much as I need to do. I might do some more anyway. Uh, just for the hell of it. Um, I need to tidy up the edge. Well, I know that it takes a heat. Uh, sounds solid. There's no flex on it. It takes a heat, cools down. I don't like the look of that, but that's going to last five minutes. Obviously, that's the side you get to see. Um, we'll get cracking on the rest of the stove, I think, before um, before I worry too much about that. That's easily accessible, if I remember right. I think it just sits there. So this is easily accessible, uh, and there might be some more broken stuff on the stove anyway. So that will do for now. Um, obviously, my um, nickel uh, welding didn't work. I think it didn't work. In fairness, I think it didn't work. Just not just because I'm rubbish. Uh, but I think this is just too much to ask. It has, I can see it's visibly warped here, and it may even have, uh, may even have what, may even have been some other excuse. Um, the brazing, obviously, that was horrible as well. Uh, Use this the wrong torch. This is not the right torch for brazing. I mean, you can braze big crude parts with this thing, uh, and be a fabulous. I mean, this is a fantastic torch for that. And actually. I, it's not bad for this because the whole thing got heated up, bearing in mind that it's wanting to crack all the time. Um, but, the, you know, neither of those methods were successful and neither of them were executed particularly well. So uh, if you want to see the right thing, you go over to uh, Double Boost, uh, go and have a look at to see what John is doing. If there's somebody who really knows what they're doing. Uh, this is the uh, Strictly Come Dancing version of... Uh, uh, of engineering, uh, watching somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing have a go at it anyway. And there we are, and that's what happens.